Tuesday, June the 2nd. Random thought for today. I came across a description of the life of a minister written by George Herbert, who was a parson in the 1600s. And he describes a minister's Sunday. And as you will note, of course, there were no such things as inclusive language then. The idea of a female minister would not have crossed his mind. I'd like you to see a picture of me as I read this. The country parson, as soon as he awakes on Sunday morning, presently falls to work and seems to himself so as a market man is when the market day comes, or a shopkeeper when customers come in. His thoughts are full of making the best of the day and contriving it to his best gains. To this end, besides his ordinary prayers, he makes a peculiar one for a blessing on the exercises of the day that nothing befall him unworthy of that majesty before which he is to present himself, but that all may be done with reverence to his glory and with edification to his flock, humbly beseeching his master, that how or whenever he punish him, it be not in his ministry. Then he turns to requests for his people, that the Lord would be pleased to sanctify them all, that they may come with holy hearts and awful minds into the congregation, and that the God, the good God would pardon all those who come with less prepared hearts than they might. This done, he sets himself to the consideration of the duties of the day. And if there be any extraordinary addition to the customary exercises, either from the time of year or from the state, or from God by a child born or died, or any other accident he contrives how and in what manner to induce it to the best advantage. Afterwards, when the hour calls with his family attending him, he goes to church. At his first entrance, humbly adoring and worshipping the invisible majesty and presence of Almighty God, and blessing the people either openly or to himself. Then, having read divine service twice fully, and preached in the morning and catechised in the afternoon, he thinks he hath in some measure according to poor and frail man, discharged the public duties of the congregation. The rest of the day he spends either in reconciling neighbours who are at variance, or in visiting the sick, or in exhortations to some of his flock by themselves, whom his sermons cannot or do not reach. And every one is more awaked when he come, and say, Thou art the man of God. This way he find exceeding useful and winning, and these exhortations he calls his privy purse, even as princes have theirs, besides their public disbursements. At night he thinks it a very fit time, both suitable to the joy of the day, and without hindrance to public duties, either to entertain some of his neighbours, or to be entertained of them where he takes occasion to discourse of such things as are both profitable and pleasant, and to raise up their minds to apprehend God's good blessing to our church and state, that order is kept in the one and peace in the other, without disturbance or interruption of public divine offices. As he opened the day with prayer, so he closeth it humbly beseeching the Almighty to pardon and accept our poor services and to improve them, that we may grow therein and that our feet may be like hinds' feet, ever climbing up higher and higher unto God.
Wow. Sounds just like me. Now here is another description as put forward for a committee that is looking for a new minister. Interesting to note that this was written some time ago and this is also all about him. The minister that we are looking for preaches for exactly 20 minutes and includes all the Bible has to say on the sermon subject. Condemns everybody's sin except yours and never says anything anyone might disagree with. Works from six o'clock in the morning to midnight and gets eight hours sleep and stays healthy. Is also the cleaner after each service. Prepares sermons every week for 40 years and never repeats an idea, an illustration or a joke. Earns £100 a week, wears good clothes, buys good books, drives a new car and gives £50 a week from his own salary to the poor. Is 38 years old and has been in the ministry for 25 years. Half of their hair is youthful and the other half is grey to give them that distinguished look has a burning desire to work with teenagers and spends all of his time with senior citizens, is a close friend to every member, smiles all the time with a straight face because he has a sense of humour which keeps him seriously dedicated to his work, makes 15 visits a day to church families and visits all the sick every day, spends all of his time evangelising and is always in the office when you need him. He has four children that never get in trouble and a wife who cooks cordon bleu like Delia Smith, has written books on prayer like Joyce Huggett and looks like Madonna without making anyone else jealous. While saying nothing about why it is that the woman's in the kitchen and the man's doing the preaching, I'll carry on. You know, one of those pieces was written as a parody, but with a serious point. The other written by George Herbert, a parson in the 1600s, was a truthful reflection of his life and the way a minister was seen to be and indeed, from all accounts, was an account of his life. So here's the thought for the day. Don't try and be like anyone else. Don't try and be like the ideal person, the ideal Christian, the ideal minister, the ideal anyone. Be the person God has called you to be. Serve him with your whole heart, but keep your feet on the ground. Admit that you are not perfect. I will never live up to George Herbert's description of a minister. And when I read his description of what ministerial life was like, and when I read that parody of somebody looking for a perfect minister for the church, even in lockdown, even in these strange and peculiar times, I am glad that God has called me to be Tracy. To be Tracy in Christ to be who God has called me to be with all my faults and all my failings. I pray that today you will be the same. You will be the person God is calling you to be today, serving him today as best you can in his strength. I hope you make it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.